How's it going, everyone? Welcome to this week's Q&A. So like any other week, if you want a chance when your question is being answered, make sure you drop a comment down below with that question, and I'll try to get to each and every question. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the first question of the weekend. It is dealing with a strip, a screws or a fastener. So we are talking if the head happens to be stripped or starting to strip on you, uh, what can and should you do? So first of all, if it's a Phillips screws and it seems to be stripping, there's a good possibility that the screw that you're taking out is actually not a Phillips and it is a JIS screw or a Japanese industry strand, uh, standard screw. So um, if you look at the, the head of the screw and it has a small little dot next to it that means it is in fact the jis screw and although it looks nearly identical to a phillips it is not some of these screws could be found on some purge valves sometimes uh distributor cap rotors uh and stuff of that nature so i'll try to have a picture of an example somewhere in that area so if you're dealing with something where it's a hex head and let's say it's a 10 mil and it's rusted sometimes you could try tapping on a 9 mil or a, a different type of socket that kind of fits a little bit snugger and try to get it out of that way so if all else fails you could have some extractors they do sell male and female extractors depending on what type of uh, screw you are uh, dealing with here so if all that fails and unfortunately you may have to drill that screw and use a different type of extractor to remove the screw at that point or if the head of the screw is stripped once you uh take out the head maybe you want to cut it or something and you remove the object that is uh you know there you can grab a pair of vice grips uh either on a stripped head or on the threads remaining and try to take it out that way so uh obviously um, it's kind of a vague answer here but there's many many different types of scenarios here in my area we deal with a ton of rusted screws where a 14 millimeter head screw will sometimes be all the way down to a 12 mil and that's exactly what i'll use i'll hammer on a 12 mil uh, socket on there and um you know it will take out these screws they also have all these types of specialty sockets so if you're doing something of this nature make sure just do your little research here and see what works best for you now if the bolt is uh, seized in there because of rust then you may want to apply some heat if you can safely so if you're not dealing with plastics or near fuel uh, fuel lines and stuff of that nature if it's not close to the inside of the car uh, really depends on the situation but a lot of different ways you can try to get those screws out heat goes a long way but it must be used uh, properly and safely again depending on what situation and where that screw is located so hopefully that answers the question for you All right so the next question is 13 honda accord v6 uh do we have a tapping noise coming from the engine so this person already um eliminated the time belt tensioner from being a possibility and the noise still persists so the first thing i will do personally is remove the drive belt and start the engine make sure it is in fact coming from inside the engine and not from a drive belt component water pump uh, alternator sometimes noises do travel and can play tricks on you so if you remove the belt and the noise goes away then you know it's something with one of those components now if you have removed the belt and the noise is still there then it's most likely something inside of the engine at that point we could have possibly a pitted camshaft which is common across some of honda's v6s especially when there is a poor uh, lack of or poor maintenance or a lack of maintenance um, and could be one of the issues if you bought the car used you're not sure what happened with the previous owner so that could be a possibility or uh, my next thing would be depending on the severity of the noise there could be a, bro a broken valve train component rock arm a bearing could be missing uh, or it could just simply need a valve adjustment that would be the things off of the top of my head uh, that I would check for so if you're going to do a valve adjustment slash camshaft roller rockers inspection um, do the engine cold so you can at best rotate the engine make sure all the cam lobes are good all your roller rockers are good everything looks good and if everything looks good then I would perform a valve adjustment adjust it uh, accordingly to the specification I like to usually go with the middle uh, of the range there if you're dealing with tight valves then i would go with the biggest end of the range but for a noise i would go with the middle you don't want to make it too tight and then cause yourself a misfire so uh, that would be my suggestion and approach with this uh, particular concern so hopefully that answers the question for you all right so the next question is pertaining to um 
judder from the transmission on light acceleration. So typically this is a torque converter, a judder, and it is common across multiple Hondas, especially with the 6AT, which is what we have here. So before anything, I would remove the dipstick with the engine off and check the condition. If the fluid is dark, I would absolutely go ahead and perform the trans service on this. I have, um, I think, two or three videos on this exact uh, issue. So I'll make sure I'll link those or at least one of them in the uh, description section down below if you want to go ahead and check that. Also, some of them do have some updates that they need to be done. So check your local dealer. And if the fluid looks okay, um, go and see if the update is needed on that uh, transmission, on that vehicle. Um, if not, change the fluid as well. If it is, change the fluid regardless at the time of the update. So if your fluid's good and you're, uh, you don't need an update, chances are it may be your actual torque converter needing to be replaced at that time. So um, that could be one possibility. Could be other things going on as well. Sometimes under acceleration could be an axle binding causing vibration, but that's typically felt on the steering wheel and not throughout the uh, car itself or you know anything along those lines. So it uh, really depends on the uh, situation and my uh, feelings and my thoughts are it's possibly uh, just the fluid is burnt out, may need an update, or worst case scenario, you're going to need a torque converter along with those other things and update and or fluid as well. So hopefully that answers this question for you. All right, so this next topic is not actually a question from you guys, but something I've had uh, two or three concerns with in, within the last week. And it is when you have a hybrid vehicle, so a CRV Accord. I uh, haven't had this concern on a new Civics yet, but I'm sure it's coming any day now. And it goes from EV to ICE mode, so where the engine turns on. Customers are complaining about a noise from the hybrid system. And this noise is actually a normal characteristics of it just engaging and turning on and doing what it needs to do to function uh, as needed. So uh, again, across the board, since these uh, cars have been out and there's a uh, forums and threads uh, pertaining to this exact topic and people complaining just simply coming from a normal ICE engine or internal combustion engine, so non-hybrid, non-EV engine, and now purchasing a hybrid vehicle and they are experiencing this transition and feeling this concern. So it's possible as these cars and technology advances, uh, they will make it a little bit more subtle and a little bit ne less noticeable. Now, not everybody, you know, uh, um, has a concern with this although some people do pick up on those and at that time we just try to explain to them that it is a normal characteristics and if they're not happy with that answer we usually try to test drive with them in another vehicle just like theirs or as close to theirs as possible obviously uh, most importantly being a hybrid powertrain and when they feel and hear the transition at that point they're kind of more at ease so again i've heard this um had this complaint at my job i believe three times in the last week so i figured it'd be a great topic to bring up as a lot of people uh, are shying away from the full ev stuff and kind of leaning more towards the hybrid stuff so uh, there's going to be a lot of these vehicles out on the market honda sold uh, hundreds of thousands of them last year probably trending that way this year as well so um, again the market is increasing so more people will be getting to these vehicles experiencing this and potentially having a concern with it that's really not a concern and just a normal characteristic so hopefully um, this uh, shed some light on that and uh, you know put some people out there at ease if you were thinking about the, is this normal or is it not all right and last but not least question of the week reliability on the first generation honda ridgeline engine uh, so the ridgeline did come with a j series and across the board j series has been relatively reliable now we do have the recall going on but that's more of a manufacturer uh, complication that happened there and not actually to a true testament to the j series overall so uh, i am a fan of the j series and especially more so if it doesn't have vcm just like the first generation honda ridgeline that engine is also found in some other vehicles are those engines it actually has two different engines one of them being the j35 uh, a9 i believe it is and the other one being a j35 z5 Five. Don't exactly quote me on those, but I believe those are the two engine codes and they were very similar one to the other. But again, J series overall very reliable. When you subtract the VCM, only you know um, enhances the reliability aspect at that point, eliminates one 
oil leak uh, failure and also there's no oil consumption issues or vibrations weird wacky stuff from the vcm engagement and just overall a, a generally a pleasing driving uh, experience so uh, they still do have the oil pump leaks the rear main seal leaks valve cover leaks and the valves could tighten up over time but overall you couldn't blow these things up if you try to 99 out of 100 times so i think that is a true testament to this particular engine and the j series overall once again so that being said hopefully that answers the question for you and i'll catch you on the next one